So we bought something new and open the door and reveal this beauty. Hey guys, it's Phil with Digging Deeper and boy do I have a surprise for you today. So we bought something new and we wanna do a walk around review on it. Obviously we're gonna get a lot more videos and give you a review uh, while it's working, but I wanna give you a walk around on something that you probably haven't even seen yet. Jason here at Riverbend, you guys have heard me talk about Jason, uh, was able to, how do I say, uh, beat out some other folks and get us this machine because we heard about this golly maybe a year ago and i said i want this thing when it first comes out and uh, he was able to deliver that for me so uh i guess with this let's go ahead and open the door and reveal this beauty boom all right guys we are looking at the yanmar tl 100 vs we're gonna give you a walk around of this machine uh, and I wanna introduce you guys to Jason if you haven't met him already. Huge support to uh, to us at Park County Gravel and Land Services and obviously the channel being digging deeper. Uh, but this machine might be one of the first in the country in a customer's hands, at least um, west of the Mississippi, I think. So uh, there's not a lot of review videos out on this yet. So we wanted to give you guys an idea of what uh, what this machine can do, all the specs on it, all the really just amazing new technology. So you know uh, what's coming out. And then we're gonna do some comparisons on this machine versus my John Deere, and just give you guys an idea of uh, really how cool this thing is. So with that said, let's jump into this. Look at just the overall size of this machine. May not give you perspective. Sam, go over there, stand next to that thing. She's huge, and you can see from here the uh, undercarriage or the underbelly of the machine. Uh, what'd you say, Jason? About 15 inches of clearance. Uh, so we'll jump into that and show you guys some of that info. But uh, Jason, you, where do you want to start? Maybe Let's at the start back. At the back here. Yeah. Okay. So we'll start with the engine compartment. Uh, we got your backup camera. We'll, um, we've got your AC condenser and your fan, uh, exhaust. Everything is wrapped. Uh, for protectant on all of your hydraulic hoses. Uh, you've got your LED lighting in the back. Uh, we'll open this up. We've got your intercooler, um, DPF SCR system. We've got uh, computer controlled ECU over there on that side. This is the best feature, I think, on the back end of the machine. You can open up these side panels and have great access to your hydraulic compartment uh, for your tank, your battery location to jump start, um, engine components on, on this side of the engine, and then we'll walk around to the other side. You can do that. You can only uh, bird wing this. So you can open up this side, which is gonna give you access to fuel filters, uh, def tank, air filter, and then to open the uh, complete engine compartment. The big reveal. The big reveal swings out with your hydraulic cooler, your radiator, and so everything is separated. You'll see a lot of machines that have uh, their intercoolers, their hydraulic coolers, their radiators stacked, and that's that has a tendency to heat soak. Um, so what that'll do is once the radiator gets hot or your intercooler gets hot or your, um, your hydraulic cooler gets hot, that'll actually heat soak and transfer that heat to each cooler. Uh, this keeps everything separate, which has great cooling capabilities. So you got a couple of them in here. Yep. And your inner cooler's up here. Yep. And the fan's gonna draw through this port. Correct. And right and, and then also it's gonna shoot it through the inner cooler so it keeps that air-to-air -air, uh, turbocharger cooled. So I don't know about you guys, but uh, I have not seen a machine open up. Let me just step back so you guys can see this. Look at how this thing opens up. It's almost like a transformer. Yeah, it's like a transformer almost. This thing, I mean, look at this. This is crazy, the access. Being a Yanmar power plant, uh, at what we, would we look up? 103.5 horsepower? 103.5 horse and about 291 foot-pounds of torque. Jeez. So this thing, uh, you guys know I run uh, Yanmar right now, and we have had, it's almost at 1,000 hours, and we have not had one issue with it 
at all. So for those of you who have run Yanmar power plants, you know they are, uh, they are solid. And what is the warranty on this machine? So the machine warranty comes factory with a two year, 2000 hour warranty and then extended warranty beyond and above that. These, these tracks it comes with are, uh, I don't know if you can tell how big those are. We've got 15 inches of ground clearance on the body. You can, I mean, you can take a nap under there, build a little campfire. <laughs> well, where we operate, we might have to build a yeah. campfire sometimes. Uh, this base plate comes uh, off to service the machine. The oil filter and the uh, drain plug for the engine is underneath this panel. Okay. Your D-rings for uh, shipping and tying down. The approach angle on this is 30 degrees from from the, the butt of the machine. So 30 degrees slope before you'll start getting into your uh, base. Okay. Well, we'll be testing that out. <laughs> Let you know how that goes. Exactly. This is a twin torsion uh, axle suspension, which you have a torsion axle, like what's in a trailer here and a torsion axle here. So this allows the front and the rear suspension to independently act um, going over you know, rocks, uh, uneven terrain. It's got a low profile sprocket. Um, I also, mean, this doesn't stick out at all. Yeah, zero um, as far as the drive motor control Not goes. getting rocks stuck up. And great here. clean out ability. Um, you see that. a lot of uh, manufacturers that their cab drops about right here, um, which has a tendency to collect dirt, mud, rocks, everything. I mean, you have I, I could almost dive through there. Yeah, this is not given perspective, um, but from this track rail here to the frame in there is that to me is it's over a foot. Yeah, here's a squirt bottle. That's crazy. I mean, you're still so clearing. cleaning out whether you're doing snow removal um, or working in big cobble stuff like that. Uh, that's going to be key for us. For it, sure. does, it does have four steel rollers on the bottom frame. It does have dual idlers, so an idler up front with the spring tensioner. It is greasable uh, for track tension. The rear idler is a steel idler. That's protected really well, I'm just noticing. Yeah, correct. It's like a, like a tank. Oh, it's built. Well. And to boot, uh, you know, a lot of uh, uh, people talk about speed of their machines. I mean, this thing, goes eight miles an hour for a track CTL. So that's at the upper end. I know their cousin machine, the ASV, this isn't uh, an ASV track system, but that system um, can go up to 10 miles an hour, 11 miles an hour. Okay. So. But it does not have the steel. It's a total, it's, it's all rubber components. Okay. Very cool. But. Yanmar and ASV are now one company, so they combine technology and produce this because in ASV, more forestry bound, um, this is more construction, earth moving. Okay. Uh, fuel fill location, um, you got your safety brace when your arms are up, another tie down location, quick coupler. This feature I'm really excited about. So all of your standard flow auxiliary hydraulics are located here. This is a case drain, uh, in case you're running a mulching head, something like that. Uh, your auxiliary, high flow auxiliaries are here. Your pin connection for your electronics is here. And also a pressure release button is right here. So that way, if you accidentally energized your auxiliary hydraulics and you can't push in your quick mm -hmm. couplers, you can engage this button. This will backflow the hydraulics, relieve the pressure off these fittings. Okay. And I'm noticing how well all of this is protected. Yeah, this is the standard and the case drain are internal, and then your high flows mounted externally. Nice. So we can get we can get western on this machine and not break anything. In a heartbeat. And this bucket is not the one it comes with. Correct. Uh, but Jason was able to to find this bad boy for us. What is the uh, the stock bucket length on this? They're actually 84 inch. Is stock 84 bucket. inch bucket. Yeah. So we're going to be able to be uh, moving some serious material with this. I was just telling Jason. I think the bucket on this is the same size as our 210 John Deere loader. 
Uh, but with these tracks and the horsepower in this thing, I think we're going to be able to move more material faster with this. Um, your quick coupler is protected um, over your step, so there's all the hydraulics for the cylinders for your quick coupler. Um, it, it is truly amazing at how much room, when you look at this size machine, which weighs in at about 10,800 pounds, and then you go to another 10, 11,000 pound machine, this just, it, it's just a massive beast. I mean, it's an yeah. incredible machine. The visibility, if you all notice about yeah, the glass cap. Um, this is so unique. You know, I'm used to in the John Deere having this great material over the whole side. Okay. Yeah, like on this other machine here. Yeah. Typical cab yep. material. So the visibility out of this thing is, is insane. It's just glass, all glass except for this. This portion here, which you can still open to yell at people and tell them to get out of your way or spot me or whatever, you know. All the stuff we like to do. All right, well, cool. So oh, let's okay. maybe hop in on the inside. Yep. So I'd like to talk about the door too. It, yeah. is, it is a frameless door. So the only thing that surrounds it is a weather, uh, weather seal, rubber seal. So it is frameless. You'll see a lot of manufacturers have a big giant metal frame. Uh, that cuts into visibility. This does not do that. I mean, you can see everywhere in this machine. It has a lockable door, um, your washer fluid. Um, one other feature is you do not have to run with this door on the machine. Okay. A lot of manufacturers, we have to use the old paper trip method, jump the wire so the machine will operate. Mm -hmm. This one, you unplug it, you unplug your hydraulic uh, uh, cylinder, and you lift it up and it comes, comes off. right off if you want to run without, without a, door. a door. LED lighting up front as well. And then I'll let you there jump cool. in and All right, here, hold that while I go on. And then uh, I saw a video from a convention. I don't know, it was probably I don't know, six or eight months ago, Jason, there was a, a video where they were doing, some guy was walking around and they were looking at the prototype of this machine. And he said there wasn't any foot room, but I don't think he tried what I'm gonna show you guys. So these are size 12 Red Wing shoes. Now watch this. My, my feet are totally under this uh, catwalk here. I'm, I don't have another machine, none of my excavators, no. nothing has this kind of room. No. My, my pickup truck doesn't have this kind of room. <laughs> I can stretch my legs better in this thing <laughs> than any, any other thing I own. So um, I don't know if maybe the guy just got in and thought there was a wall there, but uh, this thing has some room. You guys know watching me, I'm not a small guy. I'm not huge, uh, but I'm six foot and a little wide. And uh, I don't know, maybe just show them the view of me sitting in here, all situated. This is fantastic. The visibility's insane. Oh, that rear view mirror. I've got a backup camera. With the visibility out of this, I don't know why I even need a backup camera, honestly. Maybe if you're just right behind. That's cool. Well, Jason, walk us through, if you would, yep. <laughs> the best you can without seeing uh, in here what we're dealing yep, with. Absolutely. So seven inch touchscreen monitor has all of your vitals. Um, everything from your battery to your uh, fuel, hydraulics, um, everything, um, hour meter. If you wanted to do brightness, if you wanted to go through and change to your backup camera views, um, you can do so through the, through the monitor. Also, it has a crazy amount of features. Um, we're talking job clock that you can start. It's kind of like a trip meter, but actually better. It can show you on job times. If you're doing a lot of TM stuff, you can initiate that for uh, to charge your customer. Uh, maintenance features, joystick profiles is kind of a cool deal. So this way you can go through either your drive or your loader controls 
and tell it how aggressive or how soft you want that to react. Mm. So if you're a uh, experienced operator, uh, go to aggressive and this will throw every bit of power, every bit of quickness. This is electronic over hydraulic controlled. So, I mean, it can be fast as you want it to be, or you can go back and do the same thing with your drive. Now, now hold on. If my guys are watching this, we're going to leave this on medium. Okay. <laughs> medium only. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's probably a good idea. And, and this has the creep um, mode, which I absolutely love. Tell us about that. Yeah, so you can in initiate that. And what you can do is you can have the hydraulic horsepower and hydraulic um, um, power, but you don't have to run the machine at full uh, speed. So you can go into creep mode and say you want to be at high RPM, but be real gradual. You can dial it in to whatever percentage. So I can go enable. Yep. And then I can do 50%. Yes, correct. 25 if I'm, let's say one of my kids wants to get in and fart yes. around in the yard. Now, this will only affect uh, low speeds. Okay. So you can't put this in high gear and go into creep mode. It, the computer will not allow that. Okay. Um, you got loader speed, which is actually a really cool uh, deal. Also, if you wanted to, instead of the creep mode, you know, does that for tracking, the loader speed will do that for the loader arms. Okay. So if you wanted to do it at 50% loader arm speed, converse to uh, the RPM of the engine, that's where you would do that. Okay. Automatic shift is so cool. So you can put this in turtle or rabbit speed. It is a two speed um, um, gear system, or you can turn it into automatic, which means basically the more pressure you give against the pilot control, the faster you go. So it doesn't care if if you're going slow and you just have it half throttle and then you, then you floor it with your joystick, it'll automatically go from turtle to rabbit. Okay. So your ride control will also uh, control not only suspension characteristics, but it'll also do your loader bucket. So it'll kind of keep you level at all times going uh, through the terrain and everything okay. at higher speeds as well. Okay. Um, your regeneration um, is for your uh, emission system, auto idle. You guys know what that does. Variable auxiliary flow, high flow setting. This is where you you uh, select your gallons per minute. Um, propel mode is if you guys are H pattern guys or ISO. So a lot of the guys, you know, they can be ISO, which is your factory drive and loader control, or your H pattern is the old school uh, Bobcat style uh, old okay. case H pattern. Your adaptive steering, your automatic shift, uh, contacts, diagnostics, and more info. So contacts, I, of course, did the liberty of putting <laughs> myself in your contacts. So there's all of our information you there. You on that. Yeah. <laughs> and then you said this does have the ability to, um, to set the bucket at, yes. a, uh, at a level for re-entry if you're doing the same thing over yeah, and over again? It, it's got like a return to dig feature. Okay. So what that'll do is if you're going into a pile and you're loading a truck, you can go into that pile at the same depth um, by pushing the button, setting that depth, and then when you're dumping, after you're done, you can slam the control all the way down. That'll bring your bucket to return to depth, and then you go and do a make, uh, another load. It's almost like a rudimentary 2D kind correct. of system if you already know the grade that you're going to be at. Correct, correct. And then over here on this side, you always have a place to put your cell phone. Usually it's in a cup holder right. or on the floor here somewhere. We have both because we got the cup holder over here. And it's a nice one that holds tension so your cup's not knocking around. I have so much Diet Dr. Pepper on the yeah. floorboard of my John Deere. So it's it's nice to throw your phone. Yeah. Uh, it's rubber. It's not a hard plastic, which is nice. Um, so that'll that we there. have here USB so you can run your USB cable just to right here and charge your phone if need correct. be correct Very cool. Here's your throttle. You also have a, a Throttle on the on the floorboard here. Yep. So all this Again, this is insane to me and also this bolt right here and Then there's one just right on the other side 
you take and remove those two nuts and lift the cab and this pitches the whole out. cab. Okay. Uh, up here is gonna be your auxiliary hydraulic controls for high flow and low flow. You're gonna also have your ride control, your parking brake, your return to dig, and your quick coupler uh, feature as okay. well. Uh, okay. Your radio, Bluetooth Maybe radio, okay. and then also your HVAC controls. Cool, and here's the rear view mirror. I don't know if you guys can see the amount of light in here and how well I can see behind me. Pretty wild. And also seven vents uh, for oh, your yeah. HVAC as well. Yeah, I don't know if we'll use the AC more or the heater more, but yeah, there's vents all over this thing. And then your escape hatch right above you, Phil, uh, you have an escape hatch, which is multi, you can use it as many times as you need. You would you would pull up on both of those red levers and then shove this panel upwards and you can crawl out. So probably not recommended by the manufacturer, but if you did want to run a sunroof, you could definitely <laughs> you do, that. do that. A hundred percent. And a lot of manufacturers, uh, they'll use a glass breaker uh, for a rear entry. Uh -huh. Now that's a one-time use only. So sure. you got to remember that where this is multi-use if you needed to, or just to remove it. Now, and this was the Bluetooth microphone, which Correct. is cool. You don't have to scream. Very and cool. And then your windows, window slides yeah. if you order your pizza. You know, one thing that I have a complaint about on other machines is with the larger windows, so much dirt gets in these tracks, oh, yeah. you end up, they're useless, you can't even get them open. Yep. So the fact that this is smaller, you're not gonna have as much resistance ever. So you're uh, you're always gonna be able to open these without yes. doing the Q-tip clean. A hundred percent. It sounds like a small deal, but um, <laughs> when you're in these machines all day, that stuff starts to bother you. Back behind your shoulder on this side is one speaker and your diagnostic ports if, okay. in case we have to get into the machine's computer system. Okay. And then of course you got your uh, lap bar. Easy, made for big guys. You guys can't see that. Very cool. Yeah, we'll do some videos for you uh, in the dirt. And oh yes. As you know, we'll do some things with it that aren't supposed to be done and we'll see if it survives. <laughs> so exactly. yeah, we're pretty stoked. So hey, thanks for watching. You guys um, like, subscribe, comment. If you have questions on this machine, you can always reach out to Jason. We can give you guys the uh, contact info if you want one of these things. We are at the Denver location. So if you do have questions though, put them in the comments and I'll try to get them answered. I'll call Jason and, and uh, see what other things he might be able to share with me. So anyway, thanks for watching guys and uh, we'll catch you later. Bye.